So I think the best place to start is to kind of like give a like an overall like a very broad kind of explanation of what cybersecurity is, what it does, you know, why it's important. Well, at, at Cyber Inspired, we focus in the educational space. Right. So that's our, our niche and what we're looking to you know, focus on. And, do. and one of the key components of that, of course, is going into schools mm-hmm. and preparing you know, the next generation, whether it be the students or the faculty, parents, the educators, right. on how to properly you know, manage the situation that's out there today, which is constantly changing. Mm-hmm. So the cyber world is a, a classic cat and mouse game. Every time you react, the other side, of course, also reacts. Right. So it's constantly changing, constantly updating. So you have to be on the cutting edge because otherwise you're going to fall behind very quickly. Exactly. Um, but you touched on some things there, digital citizenship. Some people don't even know what that is. Right. I, I didn't originally know what that is either. And that's mm-hmm. basically, in a, a layman's term, it's your social media presence. Okay. And, and everything you put out there, whatever, whatever platform it may be on, like online or on apps or wherever you're doing your 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 media posts or whatever mm-hmm. you want to call them, right? Um, you have to be aware that that information is out there forever. Mm-hmm. So, do you, you think know, people really believe that? Because I don't know that people actually believe <laughs> that when they put something online, yeah. it is out there forever. Well, it's forever. Obviously, they don't because there would be so much. Out there, the people are afraid of now. Like, yeah, I know, like, yeah, especially young people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll say it again. It's out there forever. Mm-hmm. So when Snapchat says, you know, that's it, you post it's erased. Don't worry, it's on a server somewhere, being right. held. So everything's there forever. Everybody's got to get their head around that. It's there forever. And anybody, and and especially when you have younger kids, because Snapchat, you know, I have nieces and nephews. Um, they range from 8 to 20 now. Um, they all use the same things. They all think it's fun. To be honest with you, I've had like a little glimpse every now and then into what my niece's Instagram stuff looks like. And she and she doesn't think like her older family members can see some of her contact when, when I had to like sit there and text her and go, you need to pull this back, little girl. Like, no, 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 no. Like, no, this is the, this is the wrong thing. And well, nobody's looking at that. That's what it is. Nobody but my friends are looking at it. That's not true. Everybody can see it. Um, screenshots can be posted. Yes. Yeah, can be saved. Yeah, like, I, I don't, what, is, what do you think we have to do to get people to understand? This is, like, a, this is a real issue. This is a real um, issue. You bring up a couple great points there. Um, yes, it's, it's with you forever. Mm-hmm. Whatever you put out there is out there forever. And you are going to be judged on that. Yes. So it's it's crucial that you understand the impact that it can have. So mm-hmm. before you post anything, you really need to think about, do I really want this up there? And, and what are the repercussions of this? And not only just, everybody wants instant gratification. I get it. They want more followers. They want a great pick up there or, or a great, uh, great story to tell. Mm-hmm. So they get recognized. But with that come, comes the ultimate, you know, the vice versa, which is, you may be trying to get into if you're a younger person, you may be trying to get in college or, or start a career. And don't worry, your your employer is going to be looking at those pics. Yes. I mean, there's a couple classic, you know, classic stories out there of uh, people trying to get scholarships or the athletic or academic, and they have numerous social media posts up there with uh, the the dreaded red solo cup. Oh uh, <laughs> yes. We're going to throw a poor red solo cup uh, <laughs> under the bus here. Yes. But of course, that insinuates that you could be possibly imbibing now. Mm-hmm. So, party and, and, and if, right, and it's down to two specific candidates that are very close, something like that can literally move the seesaw in one direction or another. Yes. Something so simple. Yeah. So, you need to understand the, the impact of all that. Right. And, and what it has on you and, and everyone around you. Um, and, and not only as young adults, who obviously it's crucial for them because they have so much going on and they have their whole life ahead of them and they're trying to get, you know, start their careers and find their career path and all that. But even as adults, um, I love when people post like, oh, I'm going on a vacation and be gone this amount of time and in this area. It's like, hello, why don't you just invite someone to rob your house? Because we know now you're away from this time to right. this time. You're gone. And we know, yeah. 
and we know exactly when, so nobody's likely home, or there's right. a good chance. So if I'm in the, you know, I'm in the business of robbing homes, you've just sent up the, 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 yeah. the, the put out the welcome mat saying, "Come take it." Right. It's you know, so I always yeah. tell people you have to be very strategic on how you do that. Like, of course, everybody wants to post their their vacation pictures mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. After the fact. <laughs> do it after the do fact. Do it after the fact, or you don't have to put a time frame on it. You could put a loose, loose interpretation like, oh, I am on vac- was on vacation, or mm-hmm. coming back from vacation this day when you're really not. Right. Just change the, you know, leave it open to interpretation so it's not a defined time frame when you're away. Yeah. You're just letting everybody know you're away. The other thing I want to add is for people that are watching your animals, like I, I, for some reason I am like the world's dog sitter. We're going away because they know that I'm home all the time. <laughs> oh, I have my dog. I'm going away. We're doing that. I never, ever, ever post that. I'll only post when they come back that I was watching someone's dog. But I notice online, I have a friend right now who's in Sweden and the person watching her dog is, is posting videos and pictures of the dog on her fi- on her page saying oh the dog really doesn't miss his mom while you're away in sweden and i looked at it and i'm like she's not even posting that she's in sweden but you're telling the whole world that she's she's somewhere that she clearly doesn't want everybody to know where she is so even when you're not the one that's away you kind of still have a responsibility to keep yeah, other people's so business to yourself yeah or you need to make them aware i mean obviously yeah. the, every of course the reach extends over and over and over again Mm-hmm. With every person you tell what you're doing, and if they repost or exactly. or share, to your point, absolutely, then it's extending out further and further, and you're getting a wider and wider audience. Which of course is opening more and more doors to potentially something, yeah, um, getting out that you don't want to get out. So I want to go back because you said something about the red solo cups. So my daughter is when my daughter was in high school, that actually was just starting to become a thing. Where they were being taught, look, if you're if you're if you're posting pictures of you with your red solo coat, put that away because the colleges now they can get in, they can see your pages. And I know back then the kids were kind of like, oh, really? And my daughter took it seriously because she played sports and she didn't drink, but she was so like, mom, we can't post anything. Because, you know, I said, yeah, that's fine, great. But what was not an issue then, that is a big, big issue now, which is in the paper, it's on TV, it's everywhere, um, was cyberbullying. Because of the age that she's at, when she was in middle school, she was she was bullied. She, she was definitely, I'm definitely the mom of a, of a kid who was bullied. But um, I guess it was more old fashioned bullying because they were just getting their phones and the kids kind of didn't know how much power they had. And being able to really right. upend each other's lives. Nowadays, it's everywhere. Nowadays, you can go anywhere on social media. You see it on the news. These kids are really well, kind of like destroying said, each it's other. Growing because of the power they have now with it, with it digital. Yeah, so I it's mean, it's a whole different. So it's a twenty-four hour a day problem. Yeah, it's 24 hours, seven days a week. So I know Cyber Inspired has a cyberbullying program. They have um, a digital, I'm sorry, a digital citizenship program. We've got both. You've got both, but yeah, you've got both. So they kind of, well, yeah, they cross well, over into each other. Over, so they are sister explain programs. Explain it, because I, to me, I, I think every, every school should have it. Um, I agree with you 100% on that. And um, we certainly are the experts, so a lot of, we love to like work with local law enforcement or the prosecutor's office or who's ever already delivering. Because to be quite honest, uh, just the feedback we get from them is they're like, we're overwhelmed. Yes. We, we have a lot on our plate. We're certainly trying to do the best we can. Mm-hmm. But if you guys can support us, give us more information, we're all about, you know, at the yes. end of the day, providing the best programs we can provide and help us out any way you can so we are actually getting to the root of the problem. Mm-hmm. Um, with cyberbullying, there's a couple of keys. First, you just have to understand what it is. What is and isn't cyberbullying? What is it? Well, that that's that's a great <laughs> question. You have to get the program for that one. Though. Yeah, you program, can't, can't, yeah. give away, can't give away all the keys to, you know, to all the safes. Yeah. So you have to buy the program for that. Yeah. But um, 
that that's part number one, just understanding what it is and what it isn't. Mm-hmm. And then um, you both already discussed this. It's how it's evolved in the digital age. So back in uh, my day, when I before the digital age, and when I went to school, you you could possibly get bullied, of course, mm-hmm. yeah. and and it would t- traditionally take place at school or maybe in some after school activities where you know you were present with your friends or your you know yep. other students. Um, now it's a twenty four seven program, which Julie's already stated, because with social media, it's on all the time. So now you can't escape and go home because your social media is out there, right. and and people are on it, and they could, you know, potentially make a disparaging comments about you and, and then it goes on and on and the back and forth begins and it, t- it typically takes place in your social plat- social media platforms or your apps or a, the gaming community is a, is a big has a big issue with it too oh see and, that uh, I didn't know yeah that's I mean obviously it's a competitive you know everybody wants to be the best gamer it's, it's definitely a huge thing nowadays the gaming world's constantly growing and, oh. and with that comes of course the competitive nature and then with that comes you know some of the bullying problems that we have so right. and it's it's on all day all night so mm-hmm. it's really important as a parent you need to you need to manage your your child's screen time whether it be on their phone their gaming devices whatever um you know whatever device or method they're choosing to, to engage in it's just really important to manage that and um and then there's a lot of tools that um, the providers are already putting out there that you need to use to your advantage. Right. Um, whether it be you know Apple or Google or whoever your internet provider is, um, they all have parental tools that you can use. Uh, most of them are fairly simple. A couple of drop down menus you can turn on some of the basic features. It's always a tricky question: how much monitoring is too much? Yes. And and how much is it enough? And it like I said. Turning on the parental tools is, is a good first step, but you don't want to be um, overly into their, you know, everything. It's a balancing right. act. I feel like and, they're afraid to tell you anything because they're like, right. I think most parents would be afraid of that. Like, I know right. most moms would. I, I agree with you. Close off completely and not be open to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Snooping and, on them all the yeah. time. It's like kind of like when you're going in their bedroom and going through their bed. Yeah. yeah. And, and, so, <laughs> so you have a way of telling how soon you're program how much is too much or how is that we, ha- we have certainly certain techniques you can do and certain like you said some of the, the parental controls and things you can use to help make your job a little more um, a little easier yeah uh, we also have uh, we already you know we kind of killed uh, snapchat there but we have a whole list of if any anybody goes to cyberinspired.com we have a whole list of apps and we rate them from least dangerous to most dangerous. Yeah. Um, so the, I love that. And, and just <laughs> honestly, just knowing the names of the apps would, would, you know, get you some immediate attention from your kids that, you know, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, at least you're in the game now. At least you're speaking their language. Yes. And you're aware of that. And now they know you're aware of these apps. That mm-hmm. you, previously, they didn't think you know you didn't know anything about. Right. So now their antennas are up, of course. Because now they're yeah. like, wow. So... At least you're in the game, and you're in your. They know in, you're aware. They know. Right. Oh, my my parents do kind of know that there are there are apps out there. I did that with a group of kids that I spoke in front of, and I started to ask them questions about the different apps, and they were just like, uh, uh, oh, uh, well, and I could tell that they were stuttering because I knew what some that I didn't know everything about the apps. Right. But right. just you know, but I just kind of threw it out there to just yeah. see, like, hmm, I wonder if they do use this app. Oh yeah, well oh yeah, I don't even, yeah yeah we do use that app or that is yeah that can be that can be a little tricky. These types of people are on those apps like they they start to once you start to let them know like hey I know about that app they'll start to tell you a little bit more about the type of people that use those apps, which could really be to a parent's but, but advantage. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean just like I said once again, just being in the conversation and mm-hmm. and you said it best when immediately when they're engaging you and they're aware. Yes. And they're showing that, like, uh oh, now you have their attention too. So yeah. not only that, you have their divided attention. If something's up here, and, and you're understanding what what apps they're on and and what they could possibly be doing. Right. And it's not always clearly there are some apps that are much more dangerous than other apps. But anything, you know, whether it's online or even in your household, can be used for good or bad. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, a knife can be 
used to cut a steak and also can be used right. in a nefarious activity to severely injure somebody. So mm -hmm. a lot of the ops are the same way. If you use them with the right intentions, they're okay. But if you don't, then you, you know, you're opening up a, open yourself up to the world wide web. Everybody, everything comes with. I just don't think people would get the whole concept of I, the world I mean, wide we, web, we, like everywhere. And, and that, everywhere. And what we already hammered home is that, you know, it's there forever. Yeah. You, those two things you just got to get around your, your head around, like this is never disappearing. Yeah. Like you have, you know, it's a permanent record now. So, and it's not going away. Now these, um, the cyberbullying presentation that you did, you did citizenship, what age group are you targeting? Like if you go so, into a school, is there a sunset of the different ages or how does that work? There is, and we generally start in middle school because that's about the, the age where you're first getting access to a phone, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. That's usually around 10, give or take, 10 to 12, that's when you get your first, typically get your first phone. Uh, it's highly important at that point that you educate your kids on what comes with it because they're at the infancy of it mm -hmm. and they're still younger and they're just still learning and they don't really understand a lot about some of the dangers that come with it. So it's extremely important that that starts right there. And then uh, we also do it in, in high school mm -hmm. and it needs to be done at least twice a year. If you're in your, your school system, you should be doing it at least twice a year because this, this is like an ever changing, which we've already discussed. The cat and mouse game is on. We do this, the hacker does that, back and forth, back and forth. Yep. It's never going away. And I don't think is, that you can say that enough times. I think that it, the, the thing it, people need to right. understand is it's ever changing right. all the time. Right. And you have to constantly stay, you know, up to date on this. You can't just sit back and be like, ah, oh, we did it and now we know because it's gonna change. Right. There's no sitting on your laurels. There's no, no saying, no, Oh, we can sit back now because we've done everything we possibly can. No, you have to always be diligent and aware that something has to be done constantly. Yeah. I mean it's it's just it's our life now. Mm -hmm. And it's not going away, whether you're a, a you know, young adult or mm -hmm. or an adult. Right. This is this is the real life of this, this situation is, is our forever now. Right. So and we're, that's why we're all living yeah. live on social media mm -hmm. now awesome. all the time. So whatever we put up there, it, it's staying there forever. So Well that's why I think it's make. really important for people to know that there's a place there is a company like Cyber Inspired that understands a lot of the things that someone like me like just a normal everyday person doesn't understand and because i'll be honest with you you know that whole concept of it's always changing it's always changing well i've got you know i've got this on my phone i've got that on my phone no until i started working for cyber inspired i realized that's not enough you have to constantly be diligent with it and to have a company like Cyber Inspired who understands that and can kind of break it down in ways that someone like me can understand it and then kind of build that base up and say, all right, I'm understanding it more and more and more and more. I think it makes it even more yeah. important to get it into the schools sooner rather than later because if you give those kids that base of let's really look at this and understand what you're talking about and they can start at like building blocks, then when they get out into the real world, they're gonna be more educated. No doubt. And, and we also get into, you know, we have a couple of freebies here, but password management and, and just SMSing and uh, spam and all that kind of stuff of ways how to handle that correctly mm -hmm. to, to protect yourself. So even if you're doing everything right, right. there's mm -hmm. still these other opportunities for someone who's looking to, you know, either expose you or, or get your information, which is really, you know, data is the, the currency of the world now. Yeah. So somebody gets into that course, it's it's opportunity to, mm -hmm. you know, to yeah. take advantage. So you have to be aware of all of those things and how to manage them appropriately to keep yourself as safe as you can be. And nothing's ever hundred percent. No, we always say everybody gets hacked. So that's just the but fact that's of life. life. You that's can't say life, you know. Right. Try, you keep yourself healthy. You eat good. You exercise. You know. You look both ways when you cross the street. That's no guarantee that. You know, you're going to wake up the next day. You have to, come, you just have to be diligent. You have to be proactive. Yes, right. you have to be proactive. And, and not only that, at least if you're being proactive, then even if something does happen and you do get hacked or you do get compromised, at least you understand or you're in a position to start the remediation quickly. Yes. So then you can fix the problem because you, or you, 
you literally put you didn't expose everything you kind of put things in boxes so you can kind of you can track right mm -hmm. hack her and segregate them out into a certain space and then start blocking putting the blocks up to right to hold them there so if you're doing nothing you know, it's just you, you just can't be doing nothing those if you're like me and you think putting and everything in the trash can and saying just delete is going to work, it's not working, people. Because <laughs> that's what I do. Oh, delete, delete. Oh, it's in the trash. It's gone. No, it's not gone. It's somewhere. And now someone still has access to me. So I mean, there's and, a lot to it. And think of it. If, you, if you're, you know, if you're a thief, you're going to take the easiest thing to take. So all the low-lying fruit, if it's mm -hmm. just there to pick it, you're just going to keep picking it. Yep. Like, wow. Look at these terrible passwords, and you know, there's no security here, and it's, it's so easy to get. So, am I allowed to ask you what the most popular and easily hacked password is? Oh, we have them all. Uh, <laughs> I'll, get, I'll give you one. Give we, us we, one. We have a list uh, give me one. on the top 25. Yes. Uh, one, the most obvious one of all time is password. Password. <laughs> <laughs> Love that one. Stop using password um, as a no. password. <laughs> there are a couple other obvious ones too. Where you're like, yeah. what, what do you do? And there's a whole algorithm out there. I mean, you know, we can run it through where I could ask you a couple of questions and basically figure out what your password is. So certain oh. things you have to. That's why we recommend a password manager. We're not going to recommend any particular brand, mm -hmm. but it's important because it's going to create long, distinctive passwords for you. And uh, they're going to be very difficult to hack, and it's in a vault for you, memorized, so you're going to need one master right. password, and then does a lot of auto-filling, populating, and creating passwords for you. Yeah. So. Just make sure that one master password isn't password. <laughs> probably, <laughs> yeah. Probably not a good idea to use the word password ever in anything right. involving security. So if they so. take anything anything from here today, turn it into password. Don't use it. <laughs>